On the cover, the Baroness, Piro, Darren, and William and Furnace charge across an abandoned roof towards a small, bald figure in a black leather duster in the center of the page. His hands are in his pockets, and behind him, Dr. Bahat cowers against the lip of the roof. The caption reads, Victory, but at what cost? Issue 2, Overclocked. <laughs> well, we started off on a good foot. There's <laughs> a hand, actually. It's fine. It's, 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 you know, it's fine. It's, it's fine, fine, Nugget. It's fine. Gosh. So, welcome to issue two. There's a little recap on the front page that says, Last time, our heroes foiled a kidnapping. Almost. Uh, and then we start in on our first page with just a kind of like full page splash of Darren uh, in an empty radio shack with like dust kind of swirling where Dr. Bahat used to be. What, what, is, what is the look on her face? Uh, probably, um, all four of my eyes are enormous. Mm -hmm. Surprise, hurt, um, frustration, confusion, lots of confusion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that would be, that would summate the expression that I have on my face. Um, so what is, so what is, so what does Darren do? She's feeling real guilty now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Obviously. Sure. Um, but, but what is, is there an action or are you just literally going to stand in the middle of this Radio Shack stunned? I think I am going to spend mm -hmm. at least a beat. Well, I think that works out then because... Stunned. I think, okay, I think that works out. Um, to be because, honest, uh, probably look around because I don't, yeah. like, maybe it was a mistake or I'm calling for him. Yeah. Maybe and, there's another one. Like, maybe he's, like, yeah, maybe there's someone else there. Yeah, I think that works out. When Piro ran away from their parents' last issue... They were heading to the abandoned radio shack across the street, as we recall. So I think this is the point at which Piro kind of enters the radio shack, and you just see Darren standing there, stunned, looking around, and there's a, this little traily wisp of smoke. What do you What do you guys do? What do you do? I I I'm, I'm where is what a, the, the doctor? You have to describe it. Yeah, 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 so, uh, so <laughs> you can do that. I'm, I'm uh, stethoscopes. Uh huh. In, at, like putting a stethoscope in my ear uh -huh. and then like yeah just shrug like <laughs> where'd they go I, I am not a doctor but I just <laughs> lost one <laughs> <laughs> oh this is a good team <laughs> I recognize you from the big heist hello I wave, yes. yeah I understand I understand your gestures um <laughs> I'm I, I'm surprised you're even here. Were you part of... Did you know what happened? What what happened? My character shakes their head. And then mine's a wristwatch. And then several tentacles. And then, like, a finger dragging across the throat to indicate that the, the clocktopus is, is done. There's no more clocktopus to worry about. <laughs> I think I understand. <laughs> okay. And that's where we'll kind of end that particular scene. It's going to be uh, so delightful. <laughs> yes. So the Baroness and uh, William have kind of... William is walking off. So where's William going? Let's start William is going to go and... Because he's now a full believer in mm -hmm. all of the Mime's powers. Yes. Uh, <laughs> is going to go untie the person that he was supposed to be meeting with in the first place. What was the name? Uh, it was Dr. Morris. Morris. Dr. Morris. Uh, so he's Professor going to go Morris. and untie Professor, Professor, Morris. Professor Morris, Morris from yes. the tree okay. he, he is currently tied to. And then... And Professor Morris to... is definitely trying to, like, pull against this rope as this you show invisible up. rope. Yeah, yeah. I will uh, summon a demon to cut said ropes. When you do that, he full-on screams. <laughs> <laughs> because that's a demon. He's a theater uh, he's a yeah, it's, a, it's a big screen. <laughs> of course he is. I'm going to basically attempt to use one of my uh, legacy moves at this huh? point, which would be symbol of authority. I'm going to try and get him to calm down and listen to me based on the, the Inference family's name, essentially. Okay. And ignore the giant demon that just appeared and disappeared. Okay. Um, and, and again, just page-wise, how does that, like, what are you actually telling him? I'm going to be telling him that yeah. the Inference family will be... Covering the damages specifically to his laboratory, mm -hmm. and we'll be putting some extra money in to help fund the research that he is working so very hard on. Uh, he says, 
I'm a theater professor. It's not my laboratory, but thank you all the same. Go ahead and roll that move. Seven. So is there just a list on that one? I'm sorry, I'm not super familiar with that move. It's, uh, the options are do what you say, get out of the way, attack your disadvantage, or freeze, so it's more combat-based. But I believe I'll be going with do what you say. So okay. and I'm just so trying to distract him and get him to down. calm down. Okay. He does take a couple of breaths... And as he does, you can see a probably 30-ish uh, blonde woman kind of heading across from the other direction. Dr. Wharton! Dr. Wharton did work in the laboratory, though. Why was I what? meeting with Do Professor you... Morris? My... <laughs> I'm so confused, Eric. <laughs> Eric is nowhere to be seen. I know, I don't care where he is. I'm just confused. We, we were just supposed to be talking about funding. The dean thought that maybe I could show you kids a play. Uh, obviously very out of touch with what kids these days like. All kids like plays. But Dr. Wharton kind of stalks up, and since you seem to be in a symbol of, uh, you know, in a position of authority at this point. That is the goal. Kind of looks over at the clocktopus, looks at you. Do you know what this was all about? I have absolutely no idea. Right. And she... But pulls... I intend to find out. <laughs> <laughs> and she pulls a cell phone out of her pocket and goes... You do that. Uh, and starts walking away, and she is dialing in a number. It rings a few times, and then she puts it back in her pocket. No one answers. Meanwhile, what is the Baroness doing? I, I feel like what I would be doing mm -hmm. is trying to figure out what Kopi wants me to do at this point. So well, I'd probably be wandering around their agents yeah. trying to find someone who's in yeah. charge. Yeah, one of, one of these helicopters has landed at this point. Okay. And a couple of Kopi agents have kind of popped out of them. Um, one of them uh, you recognize as Officer Darren, who usually uh, works with the Apex City Police Department. Right. But He's... he is at this point wearing a Kopi vest. Interesting. Uh, and you've seen him around your friend Darren. Right. A few times. Probably the friendliest, or at least most recognizable face you see here. Okay. So... My inclination would be to walk over to him, mm -hmm. to this person, and try, like, what should I do now? Or I, I do I see any of, do I see Dr. Bahat? I don't see Dr. Bahat, no, obviously. you do not. Uh, do I see Dr. Warden or Dr. Dr. Schmidt? You do see Dr. Warden. Okay. Um, she is out at this point, and she has just tr finished trying to make a call that has kind of gone where. Okay, well, she looks busy. I'm going to go talk to Darren. Okay. Officer Darren. Officer Darren. Um, so Officer Darren is basically starting to bring some civilians back together and start getting statements. Um, when you kind of lumber up as a bear and some of them uh, see you and some of them kind of shrink back and some of them are like, hey, it's that bear that just saved us from a giant clocktopus. Um, so you're getting kind of equal measure of fear uh -huh. and like fan at this point. Okay. What do you do? Um, I mean, kind of like nudge him a little bit. Okay. He looks down at you and he goes, yes, Jackie, can I, can I help you with anything? What should I do now? Um, well, <laughs> and he kind of just takes in the scene and he looks at the, the, co the octopus that is just still unconscious through an administrative building. You know, there's probably a lot of people here who could um, use some help getting off of these buildings. There are, there's definitely going to be some cleanup that you could be, uh, mm -hmm. be useful with. Other than that, I, I honestly don't know. <laughs> Let's see. You do see Major Heatwave at this point has finished um, whatever he was talking about with on his radio. And is now mm -hmm. over, kind of rooting around in the clocktopus, like in the mechanical bits of it. Okay, I, I'm pretty interested in what's going on there. I, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go try to annoy him. Okay. Uh, I, I'm just gonna like want, like try to look over his shoulder and see what he's doing. Sure. Um, he's actually taking apart the the giant cannon arm. I see. Because when this thing eventually wakes up, he doesn't want it to have a cannon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's what he's doing at the moment. Okay. Otherwise, that sounds to me like an assess the situation kind of thing. That, so that sounds good to me. Go ahead and roll it. That is a... I think I have zero superior. Yes, that is a five. Okay, go ahead and mark potential. So yeah, he is taking apart the cannon and he sees you kind of like nosing around at it. You kind of like paw at the cannon a little bit and mm -hmm. it just falls off the thing's tentacle with a giant crash and like mm -hmm. a bunch of debris kind of like puffs up in the air. He coughs a couple of times and looks over at you. That was not helping. This thing is delicate. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> How can I help? You can stay out of my way for one thing. Ouch. Uh, and he is, he is sort of telling you how the world works at this point. He is, yeah. Um, as, as he is saying that, mm -hmm. he is basically saying that you're kind of a giant clumsy bear and not a whole lot of help with this delicate operation. 
Uh, so he is shifting your freak up and your superior down. I I'm going to accept that. Okay. <laughs> so uh, yeah, are you just going to shuffle off, or what is your? Well, since my freak is already at plus three, this okay. is going to mark a condition. And I think I'm going to mark the angry condition, at which point I am going to sort of sulk off. Okay. Like, I'm not clumsy, I'm very graceful. <laughs> and I'm just going to start muttering that under my breath, and I'm going to stalk off to try to find Darren. Okay. To tell, to tell Darren about this stupid guy that has got me in a real huff. So let's right quick move back to William in this particular scene. You have basically gotten... Professor Morris to kind of calm down. Mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Wharton has kind of been like, do you know what's going on here? And you've kind of brushed her off. Um, Major Heatwave at this point is trying to deconstruct a Cloctopus and you just saw the bear just kind of knock the cannon off. There's a, a little bit of a crash there. What is, uh, what is William up to at this point? Is he at this point kind of leaving the scene or is he actively doing something? I think at this point, doesn't really care about his brother. His brother will be fine. Yeah. So, I would guess that his next course of action would be to look for the other people who helped him okay. pick out the octopus. Sure. The bear is clearly visible. So, yeah. being the not-so-detailed kid that he is, he's going to yell out, Hey, bear, do you know where fungus and mime went? Bear, at this point, is halfway across the courtyard since yes. she was sort of stalking off. So, so, how do you respond to that? However, I do have my enhanced bear hearing. You do have your enhanced bear hearing. <laughs> So I'm going to, to turn around and I do not understand that I am being uh, being made fun of at this point. Okay, sure. Made fun of. Or whatever. What? Referencing <laughs> me as bear just seems perfectly normal to me. Sure. It is just that you are a bear. Hello. So we barely met. Um, uh, it's not intentional. Uh, Damn it. It's... Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn around and say, yeah, that, I'm going to compliment your, uh, your punch. At the very end there. That was that was great. Like, it seemed like you weren't going to make it, then all of a sudden you did. That was great. Yeah, that was just me really finding uh, some extra power in there. Uh, yeah, so we should go find those other guys. <laughs> I know we're not supposed to just say I want to do a move, but I want to pierce the mask here. I want to sort of, like, examine William. So I still don't really know William. That's true. You don't know him very well. So at this point... How are you doing that? How are you trying to, like... Because it's, it's like a conversational right. thing. So, my thought is I'm just going to sort of cock my head to a little bit and look at him and try to use my enhanced cyber bear vision to <laughs> okay. analyze his body posture. <laughs> um, you know, okay, oh, that's... Enhanced cyber bear I'm vision. I'm actually going to call that unleash your powers because oh. you're extending your senses. Okay, yeah, I can, I can see that. Senses. That okay. Would make more sense to me. So go ahead and unleash. Hey, that works better for me. I'd rather roll on free. <laughs> That's gonna be giving me an eleven. That's an eleven. Okay. This is William. You have extended your. What kind of things are you sensing with your cyber eye? Really, I'm trying to to sense sort of. Does he seem uneasy? Like just his general state. Like, can I get some idea of? I can tell you this. My yeah. general state is uh, a little off right now. Okay. I've just been severely reprimanded, and I'm not dealing with it well. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I'm trying to find some other avenue to put these emotions in and some direction Got to move. It. Hence why I'm trying to find the rest of you. Okay. So I think that works out for you. Yeah. That's a good place for us to kind of scene break mm -hmm. back over to Darren and Piro. So you guys have been kind of hanging out in the radio shack for a couple of minutes at this point. How has that gone? I think I spent a little bit of time trying to let a look mm -hmm. in the in the space mm -hmm. uh, while also trying to explain to the mute mime that mm -hmm. um, I actually have very little ability to identify human faces from another. <laughs> so I keep thinking I'm finding the doctor when it's just another innocent bystander. Um, in the abandoned Radio Shack, you're probably actually in the, in the abandoned mall. You're probably just running into mannequins. Yeah, <laughs> it's true. It's another bystander, and Piero's like, "Sorry, sir." No. Is this the hat? Is this the hat? That is a mannequin. <laughs> that is a mannequin. I realize that I'm a little bit out of my depth, and I can see that there are a lot of planes, and I don't yet know that the octopus is, is dead, really. Oh, no, yeah, you, yeah, you yeah. kind of mind me. I think I got it. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I want to make contact um, with uh, the Baroness. 
because she's okay. my friend. And so, so maybe this, she could use her cybernetic yeah. abilities to track so, him better than so I this, So this actually kind of comes to an interesting question. Since both of you are kind of affiliated with Kobe mm. at this point, and you know each other, mm. do you have a means of communicating with each other? Do you have a oh. cell phone? Yeah, I can re- we've, just, we've decided I can receive emails in my cybernetic eye. <laughs> <laughs> So I, I know I have means of communicating wirelessly. I'm not sure if they would have given you a transmitter to well, talk I mean, to me. You're 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 also kind of a, kind of a kid. Do you just have a cell phone? I think I have a cell phone for Officer Darren. I think okay. I only have. That really, makes sense. I think he's probably my only contact in my phone. Sure, sure. <laughs> I don't really have any friends. <laughs> yeah, being a mushroom person. <laughs> I mean, you and the Baroness are friends. We are we friends. Establish, we established that in background. But you I don't think we really it. have cell phone plans. So not that kind. Yeah. Of like, yeah. That's Okay. Not and the not kind of friends who call each other. Yeah, not the kind of like, hey girl, what you doing on a Friday? <laughs> <laughs> you, me, arrival at 11 o'clock. <laughs> awesome. Yes. Okay. Um, yes. All right. And then how about uh, Piro? Do you have any means to contact anyone else outside of your... No? Okay, that's fine. <laughs> so I think I can call Officer Darren. It better be texting yeah. only. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> you, could, you could call Officer Darren yes. if you Texting and video yes. chat. I think I'm going to you call Officer Darren... And see um, <laughs> if he can help me talk this out. Okay. Of course, she has a phone. <laughs> she just because I don't know he's there yet. I don't know Officer Darren is on. No, you don't. So you're trying to call Officer Darren. <laughs> yes. Okay. Um, so yeah, you call, and after a couple of rings, he does pick up, and you hear, "Yes, Darren." Hi, Darren. <laughs> Hi, Officer Darren. I was I was been I've been in a there's been a difficult. There was a clock to push. I'm aware. There was a clock to push, and I I messed up, and I was supposed to be a chap ER one, and I wasn't, and things got out of hand, and I was and I tried to save the doctor, but I can't find him, and some man that looked Darren, like from a movie. Darren, it's okay, it's all right. First off, we all make mistakes. It's perfectly normal. There's nothing. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, so first off, he is trying to shift your labels. Uh, he's telling you that you're perfectly normal and that there's nothing wrong with you. That would be mundane up and freak down. I still feel really... Because the, 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 the fact of the matter is I still lost the doctor and he hasn't let me like explain No, he that, hasn't. So, so that, but are you accepting that? Uh, no, I think I am. I think I'm okay. feeling even more isolated and more of a failure because okay. he, I am not... Uh, He's not hearing me. Like I okay. don't feel like what I am explaining, how I'm okay. communicating, is not uh, coming across. And I feel even more like slightly isolated, okay. and I get very upset, and I'm crying moss. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um. So. So. But, but just right quick, were you accepting that label shift or not? No. Not okay. So go ahead and roll to reject that. Eight. All right. Cool. On a hit. Um. So first off, how are you? What are you saying after this to kind of reject that? I think I'm just gonna get upset. Of like I, I don't feel that I am doing a good job. I don't feel like I'm a good Darren, and I, I, I failed a mission just like I didn't do well in the last one. And I don't feel like I'm doing this right. And I, and and I lost the doctors. And he's gone, and I can't find him anywhere. And there's this man with paint on his face or a woman. I can't tell. And. I, and I can't find this doctor. He just vanished. And the man with lots of time clockers came by. <laughs> you have successfully rejected that influence. You can clear a condition or mark potential. Uh, you can shift a label up and down your choice. Or you can cancel Darren's influence against you. Plus one forward against them. No, I, I definitely want his approval. Okay. I want to be like him. So do you want to clear a condition or do you want to shift your labels? I think I want to shift my labels. Poor Darren. <laughs> oh. Rejected influence to feel worse. <laughs> okay. You can't stop. Um, so, <laughs> so after when you say that you lost the doctor, you said, wait, wait, hold on, hold on. Who's missing? Which doctor? Doctor Doctor Bahat. He's just kind of quiet for a sec. Darren, where are you? I'm in an old relic building. <laughs> uh, and this is kind of where we shift from that panel of Darren saying I'm in an old relic building we shift outside to uh-huh. Officer Darren looking at you two and then looking past you two to the abandoned mall across the street just stay put help is on the way and Darren kind of approaches the two of you uh-huh. we haven't met I don't believe he looks so at, uh, William never mind he looks back over at, uh, at, at the Baroness and he goes uh, Jackie 
I think Darren is in that mall across the street, and oh. she seems to be in a little bit of a panic. Apparently, she had Dr. Bahat with her. Yes. And he is missing now. That sounds unideal. Would you be able to check <clears throat> on that? Yes. Thank you. God, I'll do it. <laughs> and he goes back over to uh, to helping the you know take statements from people who are just in this giant octopus fight. Sure, he's a um, good guy, Officer Darren. He definitely is. Okay, so I assume okay. you're heading over to the abandoned mall. William, are you going with? Mm-hmm. Yeah, sure. Okay, so we'll kind of fast forward from there. We have a couple of panels. Um, are you guys just staying put, or are you kind of wandering around a little more? Mining, handing tissues. Thank you, which are all covered in green moss. <laughs> <laughs> so you're holding invisible tissues that are actually working. Yeah, getting soaked um, with moss. That's, that's amazing. And then we have a couple of panels uh, of William person. and the Baroness just walking through this abandoned mall. <laughs> until eventually, what abandoned store are you guys outside of right now? Um, there's an abandoned uh, Forever 21. Okay, <laughs> all right. So you are outside the abandoned Forever 21. Uh, <laughs> And we have this panel of William and the Baroness on the left side of the panel, and then uh, Piero and Darren on the right side, just kind of staring at each other. And in the middle frame, there's this darkened doorway that above it says Forever 21. <laughs> what do you do? Forever 21 is a good choice. Yes. But anyways, <laughs> I, I'm still feeling angry. Okay. So, I don't know. I, I feel like I've been smashing pots or whatever along the way, For just sure. like little things. So you're just like smashing stuff in this... In this yeah, song. yeah. My, I, I mime at the bear and try to get the bear's attention uh-huh. and then I mine uh, my hand over my eyes uh-huh. and towards the door asking the bear if they could look with their cyber cybernetic eye <laughs> into the darkness okay I understand <laughs> <laughs> For what, I understand what you're doing and I'm gonna it's I, gonna, I'm gonna, gonna become default isn't it <laughs> um, no, do I get it Dice roll. I don't even know. <laughs> you know, you know I like it. it's a good yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna see if I can figure out what's going on with my enhanced bear senses. Yeah, actually, that's not a terrible idea. Um, go ahead and assess the situation. Yeah. Roll that superior. That's gonna be a nine. That is a nine. Does anyone want to help in this endeavor to try? Oh, yeah. right. Oh, sorry, it's the big. Out. We don't have any team in the pool. Mm-hmm. No, it's gone. Mm-hmm. Never mind. Um, so that's yeah. actually an eight, my bad. My superior Sorry. went down. So that's fine. Eight's but fine. yeah. Um, so go ahead and ask one of those questions. Okay. And in this one, so I'm going to give you a little bit of leeway. I will give you this. Um, yeah. Because again, it's Dr. Bahat has been absconded with by a guy with some apparently pretty serious tech. And when you start looking around with your cybernetic eye, mm-hmm. you can kind of see back towards the abandoned radio shack, kind of a. a bright spot where this teleportation happened. So there is some sort of like trace reading there. Yeah, that makes sense. <clears throat> we can file that under what here is in the greatest danger. Uh, Dr. Bahat, definitely. Yeah, Dr. Bahat. Um, Dr. Bahat. Still have the eyes, or did you drop them? I, I don't think I still have yeah, them. Yeah, Major Heatwave did tell you to drop those. Did you keep them, or... She did say... I did you rejected his influence. <laughs> that's, that's true. That's you you might have kept one as a trophy. I put one down, but I did keep one. And I mean, yeah, these yeah. things are fairly big, but you're a bear, so... Yeah. I'm just saying. I, I stuffed it inside my jacket somewhere. Okay. So you've got... Okay. You've got I some have... examples of this guy's yeah, tech. Yeah, That yeah. seems yeah. important. So I'll actually give you that as well with, with okay. kind of assess, since you have this still, and you might take a second to look over mm-hmm. it now that you've seen this. It's got... A lot of this tech has a manufacturer's mark on it. Oh. Uh, it's it's basically a big stylized H in a circle. This is the Heron Group's mark. Would you know them? Um, Heron. The Heron. 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 Okay. Heard herring. Oh, sorry. Yeah. sorry. <laughs> no, not not the. He- yes, it's a red. It's a red. Communism yes, no. was just a red heron. <laughs> heron, no, no, heron like the bird. They are a big biomedical research and development company here in Apex City. They do a lot of stuff you know, big tech and big mm-hmm. medicine. I would definitely know about that. You would definitely know about them, yes. Mm-hmm. So you would definitely recognize that mark. William definitely would. Okay. We've got that um, right quick before we kind of move on here a little bit. In this particular scene, does anyone want to do anything in particular? I think this would be a good time uh, to, for me to tell Baroness hmm. that you were fantastic. Oh! <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I'm gonna be uplifting, and I'm gonna tell that you were amazing. You single-handedly, basically, single-handedly, like, 
I'm sorry, rich kid in a suit that I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Who had to get an imaginary jetpack. <laughs> I like how we're doing this in front of the abandoned Forever 21. Yeah, I'm telling you this in front of the abandoned Forever 21. Uh huh. You'll always be my 21 Baroness. Oh. And you oh. were upstanding. You took out an entire giant clocktopus. By your, you ripped out its eyes. Fantastic. I wasn't really paying attention, but which one of you threw the giant lightning bolt? <laughs> that was none of them. <laughs> none of you did that? No. And who was that? I want that guy on our team. Static shock. <laughs> yeah. I hate so that guy. Let's, let's, so let's break this down in uh, in a couple of uh, in a couple of moves because I think a couple of moves might have actually. Yeah. Uh, it definitely sounds like comfort or support was happening from Darren. Mm-hmm. Yes. So, do you want to go ahead and roll that? I think can I use the best of them? Yeah. I mean, you've got that move. So, what does that say? When you comfort or support someone by telling them how they exemplify the best parts of Earth. Roll okay. plus the, freak instead of plus nine. I like it. Ooh. So yeah, the best parts of Earth, a giant cybernetic bear. I mean, I can't yeah. disagree with that. Fantastic. Go ahead and roll. Go ahead and roll it. Eight, nine, ten. Okay, so that is a ten plus. On a hit, so first off, congratulations. Uh, you, you definitely feel like you have been supported. They feel much better. You feel a lot better about yourself. They mark potential. Okay. Uh, clear condition or shift labels. So, Baroness, do you want to mark potential, clear condition, or shift labels? I'm going to clear my angry condition. I'm also um, going to mark potential because you are my bull's heart and you comforted and supported me. I like that. Okay. And on a 10 plus, you can also add a team to the pool or clear a condition yourself. So do you want to add some team or do you want to clear a condition? Let's add that into the pot. Okay, so you've added one to the team. Yeah. And then directly after that, mm-hmm. uh, I believe William kind of said that you would rather have Static Jock on <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Yes, I did. Could just be a snarky comment. Mm-hmm. Uh, or are you trying to provoke the Baroness into some sort of action? Are you just trying to snark at the Baroness or are you trying to get, get her to do something? I'm going to leave that one as just pure snark. Okay, so that's just a snarky comment. Okay. All right. I would like to use my doom sign of dark visions. Okay. But I have some questions about that first. Okay. Is what it are your questions? a yes or no question, or can I ask you to just? Oh, you can ask me anything. Okay. I will answer you honestly. Uh, is. Well, first off, you have to have your dark vision. Right. So go ahead and mark your doom track. Oh, nice. So you're having a vision about the the situation at hand, mm-hmm. and I guess the question is, um, what in specific are you trying to have a vision about? The clock. <laughs> sure. <laughs> you're trying to see what happens to uh, to Dr. Bahai. Yes. Okay. Um, so you're kind of nosing around the radio shack, and you slip your mask out and open mm-hmm. your face right quick. Mm-hmm. And for a couple of seconds, everything is very, very dark. Mm-hmm. And you see in the middle of this kind of dark space, sort of a replay of what happened. Darren lands here in the mm-hmm. middle. And again, you don't have any surroundings at this point. She's just landing in the middle of an inky black void. Okay. But she let. La- Sorry. No, Darren. Darren is a she. That's right, you're a shame. Yes, Darren is a shame. So Darren Until lands... Until next molt. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So Darren lands in the middle of this empty space with Dr. Bahat, and they are saying something to each other, but mm-hmm. you can't really... It's very echoey. Mm-hmm. And then you see from kind of out of the shadows steps this figure, who is a very short-looking guy. He's like maybe five feet tall. The entire left side of his head is just covered in chrome. He's wearing a long black trench coat, black leather pants, and he's wearing watches from his wrist all the way to his forearm on his left arm. He says something, reaches forward, touches the doctor with his uh, with his left arm, and then smacks it with his right, and then both of them just vanish. So you see that happen, and in the aftermath, you see this little wisp of smoke trailing up and away. What do you, What is your question? Is he close? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> You see this trail of smoke wisping up and away, and you actually see it going through. As you as you watch this, it is spreading out as if it's meeting resistance, like a ceiling. Uh, so you see this actually trailing up through the different floors of this abandoned mall. So he teleported, but you know, up and probably not very far. Okay, uh, can I mine to my companions? That is a great question. Can you? Can you? <laughs> I, I start oh. jumping up and down okay. and really waving my arms. Okay. Uh, yes, hello, get... we've met. <laughs> <laughs> I start pointing ar- all around us uh, to try to signify. So there's air around us. I point to Darren. I okay, Darren. Darren. Stethoscopes in, in my ear. Sounds like. I shake my head. 
I, I, I mind putting on a coat and a uh, jacket. And, You're cold. And unwrapping a <laughs> pack and performing surgery. <laughs> <laughs> I figure it out. Doctor! <laughs> <laughs> and then I I point up. The doctor Doctors. went up? I, I mind walking upstairs. Okay. That, doctor that's is upstairs. Yes. Okay. Yes. I, I, I mind Kay. touching my nose and pointing at William. <laughs> <laughs> what doctor? Liar. Is it Bob? <laughs> I assume it's Bob. Ah. <laughs> So Dr. Bahad is upstairs. Thumbs up. Okay. Is Let's... there a stairway in this place? Oh, yeah. Okay. This is a multi-level mall. It's okay. abandoned, but it's multi-level. Okay. Well, let's go upstairs. You guys head on up to the second level of this. I guess the question is, are you going to spread out to cover more ground, or are you going to stay in a group? I think I would like to stay in the group. I'm going to follow the mime, because I'm not quite sure <laughs> what we want. Do we... Does anyone have a piece of, like, clothing or anything from Dr. Bahat? I can, like, sniff him out, maybe? I know his UV light emission. That could work! That actually could work. Can you <laughs> generate or just see? I can see. I cannot generate. Mm, okay. Okay. Um, so how would you describe that to the bears? Dr. Bahat, mm-hmm. his, his, um, his coat made of his coat light is very blue um and uh his lights creak his eyes make a more yellow impression except when he's really upset in which case he turns purple <laughs> we can just assume that that's happening in the back yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because, because the clock just happened <laughs> all right so i'm actually yeah no that that'll that'll work just fine for for, uh, for that and i'm actually okay. gonna say so you're kind of trying to track that yeah. UV section. So go ahead and unleash your powers because you are extending your senses. Yeah. A little bit of yellow and maybe some purple. And I got a 10. Nice. All right. So you have done the thing. Congratulations. <laughs> I did the thing. Looking around, you realize that Dr. Bahat at this point, you can see his UV spectrum is actually one level up on the okay. roof. Okay. Uh, so you have to find roof access. Or make roof, roof access. I volunteer to make roof access. <laughs> I also volunteer. <laughs> this is an abandoned building, so... You volunteered first. I, I meant to say I vote for make roof access. Cool. Okay. He's up there. I can see him. Okay. His signature. Cool. I will summon a uh, some demon armor for myself. Tell the bear to jump on my back. <laughs> and then I'm going to grab the other two. And bust up through the roof. I can float. You, okay, I'll grab the mine. You know what? Uh, go ahead and unleash your powers. Because you <laughs> think I can't carry the bear? <laughs> I, I think that carrying... <laughs> just, I'm just saying carrying two people while breaking through a roof, one of whom is a literal ton of bear. Yeah, I'm going to make you roll to unleash your powers. Uh, <laughs> That's going to be hilarious if it bounces off the ceiling. <laughs> <laughs> you know, That's a zero, so seven. Okay, so seven. So that is a partial success. Um, so on a hit, you do it. So you burst through the roof of this uh, of this mall, uh, <laughs> car- carrying a bear in one hand and a mime in the other, and your pink mushroom girl from Beyond the Stars floats uh-huh. up afterwards. So first off, either mark a condition, or I will tell you how this effect is unstable or temporary. I'll mark another condition, I suppose. Okay. What are you going to mark? Logically? Sure. Or either, I mean... <laughs> You should have busted through that, buddy. <laughs> I did. You did. Yeah, but, but, like, you should have, it, it should have been, like... Way easier? Like, like a way <laughs> easy thing to do, yeah. Yeah, you probably arrived with that. Okay. okay. So we'll go insecure. Okay. You're feeling a little bit insecure about your, your powers. You have been using them an awful lot today. This it's is true. probably the most you've used them in a long time. So as you guys come up onto the roof here, through this hole that you have... Uh, how close to Dr. Bahat are you going coming out? This is, this is actually an important question. So I pointed exactly where I mm-hmm. saw the thing. Which I don't know how you like interpreted over, that. Kind of over in the distance. We'll just say I went straight up. Okay, so you're straight up. So you're kind of across the roof from this. Okay. So when you come uh, through the roof, you can see, first off, Dr. Bahat is kind of on his butt up against the railing. Um, he has obviously been kind of brought up here. And standing in front of him is that guy with the, the chrome head. Like um okay. <laughs> yes. Uh, and Dr. Bahat actually looks like he has been crying a little bit. 
Um, there's some tears kind of uh, kind of on there, and it, it, he looks a little bit stunned. And you can kind of hear him say, "I'm so sorry. I didn't know." And this is the point at which you guys burst through the roof, and the uh, the guy kind of turns around and looks at you. That's uh, that's three more of you than there were last time. I don't know that I like those odds. Charge! Charge! <laughs> what do you do? Charge! Uh, Are you just gonna charge? Lasso. <laughs> Well, so so I, I hear charge. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> charge. What does, what does that mean? What, is, what, is the, what does that mean when the bear says charge? What does that mean? That means I heard him try to say he's going to escape, so I'm going to try to smack him before he does. All right, so you're just going to charge. You're going to run at him. Charge at him. Yes. Okay. That seems like you're directly engaging a threat. I'm trying uh, to stop him. Yeah. yeah. It's a four. Hmm. That's no good. That's a Wait, five. Yeah. One team in the bowl. That is a five. What is your danger? Oh, my danger is three. So that is an eight. Yeah, that brings me up to an eight. That's okay. right. I forgot so my danger. Eight. All right. On a seven to eight, go ahead and pick one of those uh, one of those, one of those those thingies there. What I want to do is take something from him. What do you want to take from him? Vis-a-vis his ability to run away. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> okay. Um, you're a giant bear. Uh, you're a danger to the people around you. What would you do? I feel like I'd be trying to smash the watches, but I might inadvertently rip his arm off. Okay, so you're just like going to swipe at it with your palm. Yeah, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm in the moment. I'm really trying to stop I, him from running away. I would like you to roll to take a powerful blow. That's uh, fine. Before I describe what happens. That's fine. I can roll that. Okay. That's a seven. So here's what happens. You swat his left arm, the one with all the watches on it, and it comes off. <laughs> uh, it is not a gout of blood. It is wires and yeah. metal and he doesn't seem to react too much to that you are now holding his arm and he looks at you and he goes oh <laughs> and then you realize that all of these clocks are ticking and <laughs> his arm explodes God uh, so it. pick the thing off of that seven to nine list uh go ahead and uh-huh. choose one of those things uh-huh so help me if you give ground and toss that arm at no. one of us. No, <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna struggle past that pain. I'm gonna take two conditions. Okay. What two conditions do you want to march? Uh, I am I am certainly angry. Okay. I think I'm a little insecure. Okay, sure. Uh, so you so you do that. Never. Um, you now that said, you have definitely successfully injured uh, this, this individual. Yeah. And he goes, "That was my favorite arm. Do you know how long that took me to build?" Ah. I, you know, I am just... And he looks over at Dr. Bahat and he goes, I need a friend. And he puts his hand on Bahat's head and Bahat's eyes just almost immediately blank over, roll back up in his head and start glowing. And then he wipes his one hand left on his shirt and he goes, sick him, boy. And Bahat leaps at Darren. So what do you do? I'm going to, uh, again, shift density. Okay. So that he falls through me instead. Okay. Um, I think that First seems. Start. I think that seems like unleashing your powers. Yes. Well, you know what? We, we've already seen you do this a couple of times at this point, so I think that's actually in your wheelhouse. So I'm going to say that yeah, you shift you shift density, and Bahat kind of flies through you. Okay. What do you actually do? Uh, he flies through me. I readjust my density, and I make a. Uh, I try to talk him out of it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay. I'm a very hopeful person. You are a very hopeful person. <clears throat> All right. What are you saying? Are you you're talking to the hot, right? Yes. Okay. What are you What are you saying? Uh, I think I'm yelling uh, his name, Bahat. Uh, we met at the doctor's office. We met at your office because you're a doctor. <laughs> you're a healer. Ah! <laughs> As he's yeah, trying he's, to... he has taken swipes at you at this yes, point. Yes, he's taking <laughs> okay. swipes, and I'm dodging or phasing in and out so that I don't yeah. get hit. Yeah. Remember that moment where I phased you out and, and you <laughs> cried and I was there for you. So what are you trying to get Bahat to do? I'm trying. I think I can talk him out of this. Not really. This is clearly not working. This yes. is a more permanent. Feature. This is at least for the this moment he is well and truly in this. This yeah. is going to require something more than just words. Yes. Okay. Um, okay. So I think we have established that that's what Darren is trying to do at the moment, though. Yes. But I think at this point we go over to William. You've still got your kind of demon around you. Uh, you just saw his arm explode, and, then, and now Bahat seems to be attacking Darren. What do you do? Not sure what else to do besides probably generally make a move to attack whatever we're calling this guy, the Clockter. <laughs> 
He has an actual name, but I can't wait for you to find out. <laughs> it's probably not going to be as good as Clockter. <laughs> Clockter is pretty good, but uh, <laughs> pretty good. Don't, don't worry, don't worry. So I'm going to banish the demon that is currently around me and summon up another one right behind him, which is then going to attempt to hold him still. So are you just trying to hold him in place, or are you actually trying to hurt him? I'm just trying to hold him in place. Okay, so that's the clock turn? Yes. That, that, would be, that would be an unleash your powers. Darren seems fine. Yeah. So, so that, so <laughs> this that is would, a non-issue. So that would be unleashing your powers. Um, so go ahead and do This is not going well for me today. So what's your, what's your freak? Nothing. Nothing, so that's a four? Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, there is a move that we haven't triggered yet that I think we should, mm-hmm. because you have officially entered uh, combat as a team against a threat. So let's figure out how much team you actually have in. First off, who is leading this fight? <laughs> do, do you think the Baron is, is, the bear, is in charge of this fight? So I started the feel. fight. Okay. So first off, we just straight up add two to the pool. That okay. puts us to three. The Baroness, we have decided, is the leader because you just charged in. Do you have influence over all three of your teammates? Uh, I do not. Okay. So let's just kind of one by one go around the table here. What is your purpose in this fight, Baron? I want to get, I want to rescue Dr. Bahat because I lost him and that's on okay. me. Okay, so you're rescuing Dr. Bahat. Pira, what is your goal in this fight? Um, probably also rescue the doctor. Okay. William, what is your purpose in this particular fight? Excellent question that you're asking. <laughs> I'm mostly here to just figure out what's going on. So in which case, the... Try and get some answers. Clockter is far more interesting than the person who's actually kidnapped. Sure, sure. So at that point, we can just go ahead and say everyone does not have the same purpose in this fight. Do any of you mistrust the Baroness? No. No. Do any of you mistrust the rest of the team? I don't think so. Okay, Baroness, do you mistrust the rest of this team? No. Um, And if your team is ill-prepared or off-balance, which I don't think you guys particularly I think you kind of came in here knowing that this yeah. would happen. So that puts us at three team. So we have three team, and you have, what, a five? Oh, sorry. I rolled a four. You have yeah, no sorry, point in messing four. with that. So if all three of you can help him in this somehow, you could use all of your team. To it's not worth it. Okay. Sure. So yeah, your demon spop- pops up behind this guy, tries to go in for a bear hug on him, uh, and with his one good arm, it actually gets an arm <laughs> around him, and he kind of pokes a button on his chest and then phases through the demon. Phasing? Ugh. Take that trick up from you. Oh, no. Damn it, uh, you have power mimicry. And he is kind of watching Bahat, and he's like, look, that's not working for you, bro. And he points at Piro. Bahat leaps at you, what do you do? I, I lasso I, I lasso him. So you're gonna try and just, like, grab Bahat with your lasso? Yeah. What are you attempting to do there? Are you trying to, like, throw him somewhere, or just pin him down? Just stop him. Just stop him? Okay, go ahead and roll to unleash your powers. So four. Nine. Plus freak? Nine plus freak is... You wrap him in that lasso, and he is just to the spot stuck. You got an exploding arm in the face, which you have at this point kind of shaken yeah, off. Yeah, yeah. I'm not in the best state of mind at the moment. No. My, I'm just going to go with my initial thought right now, which mm-hmm. is to charge back at the clock there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty angry at him right now. Yeah, that makes sense. So I'm going to charge at the clock there. Okay. Uh, directly engage that thread. Yeah, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to try to knock him down. Okay. Just to smash some other part of okay. him at this point. Right. Oh, gosh. <laughs> okay. Okay. So what do you got? That's a... That's a seven. Okay, so that's no. partial success. Yeah, that's, that's a seven. All right, that's partial. I'll go ahead and choose one of those... Uh, one, of those uh, one of those results. Here's what I'm thinking. <laughs> My thought is that I'm just going to smash through this roof okay. and just try to drop the entire roof that we're standing on down. Okay. This is to engage my in a china shop. Yeah, no, I think you have destroyed something. uh... I'm also doing this in order to clear my insecure by destroying something important. That you're angry. Angry, yes, to clear my anger. And that'll happen at the end of this. Right. But I think that will work for that. Um, Right. Yeah, I think that'll definitely work. So Bear, why? Yeah, because you're definitely dropping the rest of your team. Right. So the idea is I'm going to create an opportunity for my allies, hopefully to escape. So you're going to create an opportunity. So my hope is that I'm going to drop just me and him. But that's that's my thing to create the okay. opportunity. Uh, and in a china shop gets you another one of those options. Right. So what is the other option you want to take? The other option is I want to surprise him. I think that'll definitely do it. Okay. Um, so I'm going to try to collapse the part of the building that we are on. So yeah. I think what that looks like on the page here is you just, you know, kind of charge up 
you smash through the roof and it drops both you and, right. and him. To hopefully uh, smash both of us in the rubble. Into the second floor. Yeah. Um, so this is a kind of a question this, for the rest of you. Are you taking this chance at this point because you have uh, an invisible lasso on Bahamut? I think you could probably take this opportunity to, you know, get him out of here. Mm-hmm. Um, that said, do you think you're close enough uh, that you might also be pulled in to this rubble? Very possibly, yeah. Okay. Uh, and this is kind of up to you. Do mm-hmm. you get out of it? Do you just, like, float away? Do you, uh... Can I phase my teammates I mean, into snot blobs? I'm willing to let you try. <laughs> I would, like, I make feel like that... Wait, wait. Would that affect my invisible lasso? I don't think so. Okay. All of us are pretty capable of surviving this on our own. Oh, yeah. Like, it's none just of us really need to help in, each other. It's just whether you get in the rubble. Um, I don't think I actually am close enough to okay. fall. Sure, I, yeah, because you were kind of away. Yeah, you yeah the demon I made my demon do the work for me. <laughs> sure. I'm kind of on the edge, so okay. I don't think I'm even falling. Okay, that, that's fine. That's fine. How about you two? Where are you? Do you know? I think I was pretty close to the Baroness when we came up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I want to know maybe I can either shift your density to be lighter or heavier so that you would do more impact or are less damaged by the fall. Yeah, because you are definitely going to be taking to take a powerful blow. Oh, yeah, I, I was sec. expecting that. In just yeah. a sec. Yeah. <laughs> what about you? I, I don't know. I imagine that I'm close, I, I was close to Darren. Yeah. yeah. I imagine that whatever happened to Darren okay. is also happening. Yeah, no, like I said, it is entirely up to you guys. This is one of the things where this is just a negative <clears> thing. <throat> are you going down to the next floor with this fight, or are you staying up here and getting the hot out of danger? I think I would follow her, actually. Okay. okay. And how about Hero? Probably... Stay okay. with, the, with the doctor. So we have that panel where you know the Baroness and uh, Darren kind of go through the roof. So first off, go go ahead and roll to take that powerful blow. Yeah, I'm gonna take that powerful blow. That's a seven. That is a seven. Um, do you do your conditions affect that roll? Powerful blow is plus conditions. Oh blow. right. Okay, so, so that's plus, plus two. Okay. okay. So, so that's a nine. Your, okay, so that's still a seven to nine. List. Yes. Choose one of those options, and then I will tell you what uh, your villain does, because this is a villain move time. I feel like I might provoke a teammate to foolhardy action at this point. Okay. Uh, so what teammate are you provoking to what action? I think since Darren's here, I might try provoking Darren mm-hmm. to try to do something to either hurt this guy mm-hmm. or something to that effect. Okay, so you're just trying to provoke Darren to attack this yes. guy. Yes. Okay. Uh, go ahead and roll to provoke. And do you have influence over Darren? I think you do. It says... I think I do. I think... Doesn't everyone have influence over you? Yes. Yeah. yeah. yeah everyone yeah. has influence over there. Okay, so you add plus one to this roll. Okay. So, so I'm... It's your superior plus one. Oh, that's good. Six. That's a nine. That is a nine. Minus um, one for my superior. But plus one. Yeah, so it's okay, a nine. So it's a nine. All right. So four PCs uh, on a seven to nine, you choose one. You're saying attack that guy. Uh-huh. Uh, so you can either choose if they do it, they add a team to the pool. If they don't do it, they mark a condition. Which of those two do you want? I would, I would prefer to choose that you do it. <laughs> yeah. Um, so what are you actually saying to Darren? Are you saying attack that guy or? Um. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. So you bust through the roof and you're like, get him. Yes. Um, and you land on top of him. Yeah. And he goes. You know, I almost get why the rest of these guys are kind of coming after me, but look at you. <laughs> You're half machine yourself. <laughs> look, I can't believe that you that this you were just popped out the womb like this. And I can't choose, believe you chose to do this to yourself. You have more in common with me than you do with them. And he just kind of reaches up and gently touches the side of your face. I'll be letting you know what happens. Yes. Then, what do you want to do? <laughs> I panic because... <laughs> That's the first time she's ever asked for help, really. And because she's always been able to, like, handle all the big stuff herself. Uh-huh. And this, so I panic. Mm-hmm. So I uh, unleash my full potential. <laughs> okay. And I decide to increase the density of the entire building, and focal, focal point is him. Okay, so you're trying to collapse a building. On, that is definitely rolling to unleash your powers. Yeah. Uh-huh. Congratulations. Go ahead and do Thank that. Thank you. You guys are destructive. <laughs> Six, eleven. Okay. Whew. Nice. Good job. Uh, that's plus your freak, by the way. Oh, okay. In that <laughs> case, thirteen. What is your goal? Wait. Here? Yeah, thirteen. What is your goal here? 
Um, my goal is to get the man who was kidnapped by Hot and mm -hmm. is now attacking my friend mm -hmm. and end him. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Wow. You guys went real bloodthirsty. Real <laughs> uh, it's, that's fine. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, it wasn't even me. I know. Right? Come on, guys. I was expecting, if anything. <laughs> She's uh, my friend. So, She's yeah. my COVID so, friend. So, this building starts collapsing in, and uh -huh. you basically just kind of brace yourself over this guy. You are now holding up most of the weight of a building, and it is starting to crush you as you see him wiggling out from the rubble. You see, your friends go big. I just wanted to talk to a guy, and you had to get all up in the grill. You don't know me. You don't know my life. Meanwhile, back up on the roof... Bahat is still pretty angry and uh, straining against the bonds, and he is way stronger than a middle-aged doctor should be. You can see that, like, little lines of circuitry are trying to spread down from his eyes and into his face, and he snaps your lasso. <gasps> what do you guys do? For the time being, our bear friend is getting crushed. That's true. Yeah. I feel like this is more important to us. Dar Darren has gone a little bit off the deep end at this point and brought a building down on those two. Yeah. We need to save the bear. <laughs> no, this is great. To be fair, box would be fine. It was a full heart. You said From a purely to game perspective, like, well, it was a full I am good, good savior, but perfect. I'm very. I'm, I also took insecure, so defending someone is not. I'm basically rolling let, pure. Let. I'm going to <clears throat> attempt to summon a demon to take the load off the bear, so she can crawl out. Okay. Uh, if you want to be available to help with that as needed, that might be a good idea. Okay. And weirdly enough, I actually think that that's more unleashing your powers. You are reshaping your environment. Just be... makes literally no difference to me. <laughs> roll wise, it's the go. same thing. That's fine. Go ahead and roll for it. <sighs> Killing me. Five. Okay. Uh, so we both. The Baroness probably can't help with this, but Darren and Piero probably could, and you've got three team in the pool. Do you guys want to help? And if so, how? Uh, the only thing I can think to do is to mime a box around the bear, the Baroness, yeah. so that uh, that can take off some of the weight yeah. of the... Yeah, no, that absolutely would work. Yeah. Okay. okay, so you're helping in that regard. Now that I have this building coming and crushing... <laughs> yeah, you realize you might have overreacted. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! <laughs> I turn her to goop. <laughs> <laughs> you turn the bears to goop? Yeah. It's not a bad idea. <laughs> I turn you to goop. Okay. The way the box, even if it can't take the entire brunt of it, at least she won't be hurt. Let's call okay. this whole thing a defend action. I'm taking some of the weight off it. She's making her more malleable, and we're, we're still, you're also taking weight off. Unleash. We're still on unleash, but basically you have definitely assisted enough that we have reshaped this into a more suitable environment for bears to exist in. <laughs> uh, that said, it is only a partial success. Uh -huh. So you can either mark a condition or it can be unstable or temporary. Just I for, call just it for, unstable or temporary. Mm -hmm. You get to declare what happens I if get I do that. Declare which, now, and again, you are, you are definitely succeeding. Mm -hmm. You are definitely getting your, you know, your intended purpose. I'm not going to take that away from you. But it might not last very long, or something else might happen. I'll let you handle this one. I'm basically going to say that it's probably going to be temporary. Basically, there's a lot of weight on top of this invisible box and right. this demon, and they're not going to be able to sustain it for very long. So you've got a pretty short window. At that point, at that point, uh, it has also taken enough weight off of the guy you've been calling the clockter. <laughs> that he has successfully wriggled out. He is now kind of hanging on with his one good arm to the second floor of this. He's outside and he looks around and he goes, well, you know, this would have been so much easier if I could have just clocked out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, beggars can't be choosers. And he lets go. Uh -huh. All right. Uh, what do you do? Gooey there is. Am I back in control of myself? You are. Okay. I am definitely going to try to get out of this place that's crushing me. Okay. Would that involve me jumping out the window as well, or would it, that involve... <laughs> it could. It's up to you. Okay. I'm not sure just how far away I have to move to get away from this crushing... What well, was he hanging off of the second story? I thought she was on top of him, and then there was a building... She was. She was kind of over him, and then the oh. he wiggled was out. Her, and then you buttressed it enough for him to wiggle out. Uh, yeah. What about the box? Is... The box is still there. Okay, so yeah. can... So I have the option of just, like, wiggling out and getting out of Dodge. I also mm -hmm. have the option of jumping out the window after the clockter <laughs> and hoping that I can, you know, survive the fall and everything. I'm angry, but I'm also insecure. Okay. So I think I'm just going to get myself out of dodge, but I'm going to do it by trying, 
by smashing all of the stuff that's above me. I think that's well within the range of your abilities. So, I mean, I'm not going to make you roll anything for you. Okay. You just kind of smash out of the rubble. Okay. Um, that's perfectly fine. And the two of you still up on the roof see a kid with one arm in a trench coat, and you hear the telltale whine of a jetpack. What do you do? Mine a rocket launcher. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I thirsty. Uh, I don't think I can. I don't know. I don't even know where to start mining that. Anyway. Yeah, I would like to. I would like to um, scooping motion. And how far away from things. us is he? At this point, uh, he basically let go of the second story. You guys are on the roof, so he's probably close to the ground. He's getting back on the jetpack. I mean, you hear it starting up. Um. So I I I, I might a scoop a, a scooping motion mm-hmm. as if I have a, a stick in my hand. Mm-hmm. With a, something attached to it, and mm-hmm. I pick a few invisible things out of that to show that it can hold <laughs> something. And then I, uh, <laughs> hand over hand, uh, extend the length of the stick. Okay. And I catch up. This is a long series of panels to go through. <laughs> what? That is a lot of panels. I, I scoop um, them up that is, to like that a butterfly net. That, that is a long series of panels. I, I like it. And I'm going to go with it. Go and ahead. Then and, that's fine. Go ahead and roll to unleash your powers. <laughs> I can't see that. That's a five. five. Seven plus two. Freak. So nine. that's nine. Uh, so you unleash your powers. Do you want to help in this? Do you want to add to the pool? You have one team left in the pool at this point. So you could make this a total success or it'll be, you know, why not? I'll burn that last one. I'm going to uh, grab onto her net as well and assist okay. her. <laughs> and just like hold on to it. You do the thing. And you hear from the ground, Oh, what is this? <laughs> this, this is... A, you are a cheater. <laughs> Magic. Really? <sighs> you are ruining my day. Meanwhile, uh-huh. you have burrowed through all this mess. Are yes. you going up, back to the roof, or... I, I feel like I'm going to go back to the roof. Okay, so you, you kind of get up onto the roof at this point. What is Darren doing? I think I'd be looking for you in the rubble. Okay, so you see the bear and it's kind of like burst out of the rubble and come back up on. Yeah, and I think I would hug you because I would Yeah, really I'll let you know that I'm okay again. Yeah, okay. okay. Yeah. This is also kind of the point at which you can hear sirens and yeah. you realize that this is happening directly across from where a bunch of Kobe agents were helping people. That's um, right. There are now at least a good half dozen agents surrounding this guy on the ground. And he kind of looks around and he goes, can, can I have a hand? No. It's mine. Because I'm missing. I mean, it's, it's exploded. It's, it's, oh, that's it's right. Dead. It exploded. It's dead. But you hold on to that eye. I'm keeping that eye. Yell down. Don't let him touch you. Meanwhile, I think mm-hmm. kind of the last sort of panel of this is he's, you know, surrendering to the, the rest of these good mm-hmm. agents. While up top, uh, Bahat, as previously mentioned, yeah. has burst out of that lasso. And now he's just standing there, like frozen in this look of just like horror with his face horribly distorted. There's just basically circuitry all over uh-huh. his face at this point. And he seems to be locked in position. And that is the last panel of this, is the, the rest of you realizing that Bahat uh-huh. is basically no
Masks A New Generation is written for Magpie Games by Brendan Conway. It is made of magic, dreams, and a fair amount of spandex, and seriously, I love it, please check it out. The Baroness is played by Christina, Piero is played by Lenny, you can find her on Instagram at incognitotuba, William and Furness is played by Jordan. Darren is played by Nan, find her on Instagram at nanjitsu. Apex City is GM'd by Jeremy, who also writes the music and edits this podcast. Our album art was provided by Ash Brandt. Find them on Twitter at cinder underscore Brandt, that is B-R-A-N-D-T, on Instagram at Brandt.ash, and on Tumblr at Kimmins. Find us on Stitcher, Google Play, or your podcatcher of choice. Follow us on Twitter at ApexCityCast. Thank you for listening, and we'll see you next time.